so I am live. We're telling your followers that you started a live, okay. So Hey, everybody, I'm setting up this thing right quick. Uh, I'm getting used to it. I never went live. I, I don't go live on Instagram too too much. So I'm, I'm getting it. I just requested the brother that I'm going to be going live with that's going to talk about this thing. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Hey, hey. So I, I requested him. I'm working off two phones, so y'all got to forgive me. I got to expand and try to go to two different platforms here. But I'm going to get it. I requested you. All right. Hey, hey, Shanice. <laughs> How y'all doing? Hey, I got a treat for you guys. Uh, this brother, the ancestor is is unable to log in. Okay, they uh he's he's getting this uh thing together. He'll be here soon, and everything. And now uh, he'll be coming in hot. Man, this all these social media platforms got me wilding. Man, there's so many. I just been doing one. There's so many social media platforms, and I never thought to do it like this. And it's crazy. So let me text him again. Y'all got to bear with me. I'm learning technology. I'm 9,000 years old. Hey, I got you. Uh, I got the live, and I'm just trying to see if you're going to join. Uh, get it. Yeah, I just, I re okay. All right, everybody, he's coming in. I just got to add him. Let me see what that say there. Hey. So, so today we're going to talk about ancestors and everything of that nature there. And this brother I'm bringing, he has his own company. Uh, he, he shows you how to get to your ancestor villages and everything. And he and I had a, okay, let's say if you request, he's coming in, go live. There we go. So he's coming in. Let's hope the sound and everything gets right. Connecting, he's coming in. Hey, the frat. What's going on, Big Mob? You know it, you know it. All right, so this is my first time doing something like this, and I and I thank you for being patient with me. But as you know, I thank everybody, every one of my followers and everything. They need to hear this message that you got going on. It's, okay. So I'm not going to do too much talking. I'll, I'll ask a couple questions, but I'm going to let you introduce yourself and uh, tell them what you do. Go ahead. All right, well, before we get started, I first must thank my ancestors for making this company possible. And I also want to thank your ancestors and all the viewers' ancestors for joining us in this exchange. My name is Drake Reed. I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. I played professional basketball overseas for 11 years. And that led me into uh, looking into my ancestry. And I was able to find our, our ancestor village in, uh, in, in Mali. And that led me to get naturalized. And now I play on the Mali national basketball team. And that led me to start this uh, this company, Sankofa Global Exchange, to help everyone uh, who's been caught up in the Atlantic slave trade, as well as folks that uh, have indigenous ancestry, help everyone find uh, where their home truly is prior to slavery, and all, as well as the information before, during, and after slavery as well. So we cover the whole gamut. Man, that's, that's exciting. So, uh, and thank you for that, because uh, again, I, uh, my brother, he was watching some of my videos here, and uh, 
he recognized that we were part of the same fraternal organization, so he reached out. We chopped it up a little bit, and he shared his 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 experiences with me. And as men, we went back and forth sharing our experiences. It was a beautiful thing. And then he just hit me with this whole ancestor thing, and I'm like, huh? And as he was talking, I got so intrigued, and it caused so much to start stirring back up in my mind. And I'm like, everybody got to hear it. So again. I, I come in and ask questions, what I think the viewers may know as you go on explaining it. And, man, just let, let, let them have it, bro, because this is needed. Okay, well, I'll, what I'll do first is uh, kind of dive into the whole DNA compared to genealogy thing. Because most people think when you talk about genealogy, they think you're just taking a DNA test, which is, which is not entirely true. So the difference between genealogy and DNA is this. You take a DNA test. And no matter what company it is, you know, you, you take you spit in the valve or you you uh, swab out your cheek. You send them you send them your results. You get back in a couple of months that you're from a specific country in Africa, a specific country in Europe, or wherever, right? Excuse me. The more advanced ones will tell you which which tribe you are from. Which, in my opinion, knowing the tribe is more important than knowing the country because of the migrations. But anyway, so you'll get that, and that's it. <clears throat> Genealogy, I mean, DNA is a small fraction of genealogy. I'll give you an example of genealogy. My ancestors, the first two ancestors to arrive to the States, they were taken from Kai Mali in 1855, okay? They were, they were taken and, and held captive in Fort Medine, which is now a UNESCO heritage site. They were shipped up the Senegal, the, uh, the Senegal River up to St. Louis, Senegal, and then they were sent to Havana, Cuba. And in Havana, Cuba, they were sold separately. One was sold to New Orleans. The one who was sold to New Orleans was sold in the French Quarter to a plantation north of New Orleans. And then she was sent up the, she, she escaped up the Mississippi River to West Helena, Arkansas. Then the other, then the other brother, uh, the, the, the male, he was sold to Galveston, Texas. And somehow he ended up being sold to a family in, in, uh, in West Helena, Arkansas. So those two were se separated and then reunited. So that, that would be an example of genealogy, okay? It's way more detailed, it's way more in depth. So you wanna put names, with faces and things evolve. Sometimes you might have a little wrinkle that's wrong and you go a little deeper and you figure it out a week later, two weeks later, a month later. But you wanna know what happened to these ancestors because that is what happened to you because that DNA is inside of you right now. So that is the important thing, the difference between DNA and genealogy. Okay, so let me ask you a question. You explained to me the other day how knowing your genealogy and all that stuff, how it relates to generational curses. I got some homie mm -hmm. fans, bro, and I want to. I want you to dive deep because that's how you caught me, and mm -hmm. just by you talking, they, they need to hear this. So explain to them about the generational curses and how your company helped, you know, eradicate that. So there, there's two different things. First off, people bundle together trauma and curses, and they think it's the same. It's not. So you have trauma. Trauma will become from maybe your ancestors were tortured. Maybe your ancestors was forced to take, uh, you know, take drugs and medicines and things that were that were not beneficial for them. Maybe your ancestor was violated physically or, or mentally some kind of way. That will be trauma. OK, and those things can also affect your lineage. But curses mean, you know, like what, what the barons be talking about, things people people do things to you. And so if you're caught up in a slave trade and you're coming from an area where those things might be prominent, and you go into other areas where those things might be prominent. You're talking about things that could be affecting your lineage for years and years to come. And you're two or 300 years removed from knowing who these ancestors are. So you're being affected by it and you don't know it. Mm. But when you get into your genealogy, this is the roadmap. This is the roadmap to show you who's who. Okay. And so you'll be looking at your family lineage and be like, man, we have addictions. We have, uh, we have these problems, these mental problems and things. And you think that's just how it is because you only know as far back as your grandmother or your great grandmother. But if you look at your great great grandmother or your great 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 grandfather, that was never that was never an issue. But you don't know about them because you haven't looked into your genealogy. But other other nationalities, other races of people, a lot of them know their genealogy and they're able to overcome these these uh these transgressions. That is, and 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 I know, I'm gonna let you continue, but I want to share this. That is so true because. Uh, Dealing with dealing with some of the people I used to work with when I was employed, this uh, Irish guy, he kept telling about how his how the English had his family, and mm -hmm. the 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 trauma that fell from the English. Then he said something about the the Turks, and he went he said something that was beyond me, 
And I'm like, but you're white. That was my only thought process, that you're white. But he, no, mm -hmm. man, he was, he was on what you was on, but more of a, a emotional base versus you on a more chemical, physical. And mm -hmm. he was saying all this stuff, and I didn't understand a couple years ago. But me and you, I, I saw to understand it. But so, so how does that affect all all colors and creeds and things? Like, is this something that you just think African Americans should get, or everybody? Well, I, I think everyone should know what's going on with their family lineage. I mean, from from my travels, there's nobody that I've encountered, and I've lived in a lot of different places, uh, a lot of different countries. Everyone is interested in what happened to their family because that's that's you, you know. Your great great grandparents, people don't think of it that way, but their DNA is inside of you. The people that was 10 generations ago, 20 generations ago, that affects you right now to some way, to some way, shape, or, or fashion. So you might you might not even know who these people are, but it's all of a sudden somebody's super gifted and they're really they're like some kind of brainiac. But you don't know that someone 300 years ago was like the, the person that everyone went to for uh for intelligent advice in yeah. your family. But, you know, you might look at, you know, you have a, a child that's born or something and they're super gifted athletically and no one else is. But you look a couple of generations back, you have some kind of phenomenal athlete in the family. These type of things will pop up when you look into your uh, your your ancestral history. And I always tell people, focus on your direct ancestors, because when we talk about ancestors, we talk about it in a broad sense. We'll say our ancestors, this, our ancestors, that Well, your ancestors might not have might, might have never been in Asia. Your my ancestors might have never been in East Africa. Your my, your ancestors might have never been in the Caribbean or South America. It's important for you to look into your own direct family's ancestral history because that that is what's most pertinent to you. Mm. I like that. I, I like that. So I so I, I hear a lot of words get tossed around throughout the woke community, the black community, however you want to call it. They always say our ancestors watching no us. And then they'll be praying to a picture of an ancestor from Kenya when here it is, you're from the Congo. Yeah, I, I, so mm -hmm. I, is that what you're trying to uh, reference it to, something like that? Right, right. It, it's, the main thing is it's going to mean more to you when you know that this is the actual ancestor that is in your lineage because you might be paying homage to an enemy of your, of your, uh, of your, aunt, of your ancestor. <laughs> you might be paying homage to someone that has nothing to do with anything that, that's beneficial to you. You want to focus on your family members because those are the ones that's looking over you. The, the ones that's directly connected to you are the ones, you know, your great, great, great aunt, your great, great, great uncle. Those are the folks that's looking out for you. And it, that was, those are the whispers you're getting in your ear. Those are the those are the knocks you're getting at your doors from the folks that's connected to you. Okay. Yeah, all right. So, so I had another question, and, and and I'm gonna ask a question that I think the viewers might want to hear, and everything. So, toxic ancestors. I know, I know a lot of a lot of my clients. They sit up here and they tell me, Baron, I got a I got an ancestor altar. I got I got Maybelline and Jimmy Jones. Everybody on my ancestor altar. With this, and it, you can say true, true. Uh, is it is it logical? With what you do, your company provide, you can help them trace each individual person to a certain extent to where they mm -hmm. know not to use that person. Because what if somebody was a serial killer, a rapist, a uh, human trafficker, and you got that person's grandfather's name on the altar? You, you follow what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not a, a priest or anything like that at this point. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, as far as how that affects you, I don't know to the extent how that would affect you. I would think that just logically you probably wouldn't, you know, want want to uh, be associated with something like that. But uh, but you will find all, the truth is going to come out when you look into it. You know, the, the um, ancestors such and such, they did some foul stuff. Ancestors such and stuff, she did some foul stuff. He did, you know, those things are going to come out. And sometimes that discourages people from looking into the past because they don't want to find these things. But what I'm telling you is the healing is going to come from finding it. The healing is going to come from knowing that that's just one person, but everyone else was straight. Yeah. You know, the healing is going to come from, you know, uh, you have problems with, you have high cholesterol, you have obesity, you have all these bad problems, but you find out that your great, great aunt was a medicine lady and she lived to be 105 and that was never an issue. And, and she left the recipe book 
in a box in the house that nobody thought about and you look through it and it has a, a cure as to all of the ailments that's been plaguing y'all. That, that, that's what happens when you look into your ancestry. You start finding all these inheritances and things that's around that you didn't think was a big deal, but they are, and it will change your entire reality. These things are tangible that you can put to use right now. Wow, man. That was that was some powerful stuff you just said, and uh, it just took me back to a reading that I did a while back ago, but that's that's powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, this is heavy. This is, I mean, listen, I done, I done played ball forever, okay? I done played all kinds, you know, won all kinds of games and championships and all that. Nothing has amounted to this answer for work. Nothing. Wow. No. Damn. <laughs> Rather say she, you, you can find the, the, the recipe book, the cures. Oh, man. You, you just never know. You have ancestors that have left things behind physically for you to get. You know, that, you know, I have, uh, I have students that have found all kinds of things. You know, I have clients that have found all kinds of things, and it's just like, wow. You know, some before they came to the company, some before, some after they came to the company. It's just like, wow. You found that, <laughs> so so let's 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 eradicate. I wrote down myth right here. Let's eradicate one of the myths that these mainstream genealogy companies are are selling us. Uh, that this this fictitious thing eradicate it because you go ten times in depth. It, let's let's eradicate some of these myths. Of this this what they saying? Oh, we can help you find this this this. Okay. Yeah, just, uh, okay. just educate them on the myths. I, I think what I feel is a myth. Okay, so what so what myths are you talking about? Give me give me. Give okay, me so let's say uh, when you see the little the the little leaf and all that shit float on your TV and stuff, and they say you really want to know who was in Chicago at this time, go on your tree and they show somebody in the military black and white photo. Everybody think it should stop at that. So explain to them how to me that's a misleading to people. I think so what, what I've come to find from doing this work is at the end of the day, you want, you're going to go as far as you want to go. Okay. And you should never believe uh, anything that is commercialized because you, you never know what kind of loops. So for instance, my mother's side goes straight to my, okay. Um, straight to my, we, you know, that's, that was actually like the easiest branch of the family to figure out. My dad has all, all kinds of twists and turns. You have Native Americans. You have uh, Africans from, from four or five different nations, okay? And back then, they might not even, uh, they may not have been nations. They could have been just kingdoms, okay? Mm -hmm. You have all these different things that's going on. So for you to say that your ancestry stops 50 years ago with a military person or 100 years ago, that's just not, that's just not deep enough, Okay. Because if you are of African descent or indigenous descent, your main focus should be finding your ancestral village because that is the key. The last two to 400 years is what you need to rebuild yourself, okay? To recapture what was lost because that, that's where the name changes happen. That's when the trauma happened. That's when all these things happen. Not to say that some of these bad things didn't happen prior to, but because you were, we were, uh, our ancestors were in their own culture, they could fix these things much more easily. So whereas our our ancestral history was uh was was redistributed, it was tossed up, it was all you know, it was made to be uh irrelevant, and so now we're here two, three, four hundred years later, and we're having to relearn these things. But what I'm telling you is this genealogy is the roadmap back home. Mm -hmm. It is the roadmap to recapturing everything that was lost, and it behooves anybody who wants to be their most powerful to look into your genealogy. And I and and I and I love what you just said right there because as the Baron, I do ancestor reading, and I never once looked into my genealogy until, you know, I spoke to you, and and I got a direct connect with with the past. And when we spoke, and I and I and I and I speak about this to uh, my friend, when we spoke, you had me thinking a lot because I as you said, here it is. I, the story I was told, because uh, you're doing mine now, the story mm -hmm. I was told, we come from Barbados, from the Congos, and here it is, I don't speak a lick of, Cre a, a lick of Creole, but my guardian angel, my deity, is a Haitian Loa. And I'm like, that still baffled me, why is I got a Haitian Loa, when here it is, I'm from Barbados, in the Congo. I mean, it, it, it explain, explain it to me 
I mean, explain it to them like you explained to me to help me understand that one. So, so what you're going to find is, okay, so your family may have been from Barbados, but you might have ancestors that didn't go to Barbados that actually went to Haiti. You have that those type of things that could go on. You also have um, those type of spiritual systems could have existed in Africa before they got to the Caribbean. You have that going on. There's so many different things. When you look into your genealogy, the main thing, that uh, one of the top things you need to look at is the time frame, okay? Because what happened 100 years ago in St. Louis, where I'm at, is different than what's going on 100 years, you know, right now. What happened two or 300 years ago in St. Louis is different than what's going on right now. So you want to know the time frames, but also when it comes to spirituality on top of, you know, mixing in with the ancestors, it's just a myriad of things that could have happened. So when you actually look into it and you put the names to faces, that's the thing. You want to put the names with the faces, okay? When you know who the person is, when they were born, where they live, all these type of things, then you're able to understand completely why things are the way they are now. So now, you, now you're able to use these instruments and things that you have more effectively because you understand how you came into being. Wow. And, and, and that's something they don't teach you in any spiritual philosophy that I've, that I've turned. They, we talk about time is relevant. Time don't mean nothing. It's a construct. But what you just said to me puts it, gives time a, a purpose. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. I mean, the timing, is, the timing is key. I mean, when I look at my own ancestral brackets, you know, when I say brackets, I mean like the time frame in the brackets. You have four... You have four types of uh, four branches of your family, four main branches. Okay. You have your mother's mother, you have your mother's father, you have your father's father, and you have your father's mother. Those are your four main branches of your family. So each one has a powerhouse of information. And though, without those four branches, if you just know one, you losing. If you just know two, you know a little something. If you know three, you on you on the, you rolling. If you know all four, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can you can you can, you can write your own ticket. I love it. Now I mean because I was explaining to somebody the other day. I said, man, when you understand what the people in your family persevered through, were able to accomplish, okay, no matter what the situation, the th the way that's going to make you feel afterwards, man. I mean, you're just going to feel unstoppable. Mm. I mean, think about it. I didn't know anything about any of this years ago when I was in my mid-20s. And when I finally looked into it, man, I'm naturalized as a Malian citizen. I just played on the national basketball team. All of these things could have been available for me when I was 10 years old. <laughs> you know, but it's just like these these type of things are there for you if you're willing to if you're willing to look into it. That's all it is. The ancestors want to be found. Yeah. They want to be found. They want to be found. And they want to help. I, I know that, that they want to help us, man. So, so do you do you mind sharing? Hold on one sec. I got to grab my charger. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to die out, man. We rolling. <laughs> <laughs> While you're doing that, can you see the question that's popping up on the screen? Yeah, let me uh, look. Because I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have them ask you some questions since you're here, and they got and they got you as an audience. Uh, they got your attention. I'm gonna have them ask you some questions, and, and feel free to, if you can read that that, that stroll on there, uh, to, to answer them in a few, because I'm pretty okay. sure they got questions too. Okay. Well, y'all can you know let them roll. Well, I'm ready. Well, before we get in that, uh, you uh, after we spoke initially, I went to your Facebook page and because I wanted to make sure you was legit, and I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. Well, you know, you know, Google changed the game, man. Hey, boy, Google. <laughs> I had to make sure you were legit, right? So I went Hey, you meet Facebook somebody, they're going saw, straight to the internet. Everything you, was, you was, everything you was saying was true. You, how you actually went to the to the uh, Indian reservation, looking at that, and and how you took pictures in front of um, the the I, I don't know was it Cherokee, but uh, the Indian stuff, and you went searching once you found what you needed, and I say, okay, brother, pretty legit. And yeah. Even, even the, I listened to the video of the car ride. You're driving up there, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you legit, man, and and, and yeah. I want the, the viewers to know that this is this is real. He took it serious enough 
to go turn this into a business to help everybody, especially people of color, because we have we the only race that have been misplaced so damn bad. It, it's it's just unreal. But I'm gonna let you uh answer some of these questions. Okay. So somebody asks, what about the ancestors that were lost at sea? So those will be tough. I mean, unless you have some kind of intuitive ability, I mean, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be hard to figure that out. The only thing I would say is if there were someone that you found that you knew left the port in, in West Africa, okay, and, they, and there is a document of the ship that they were on and their name is on it, then you could probably find it there. That's going to be very difficult, but... I can't say it's impossible because every so often something that you thought was impossible will come about. If that ancestor wants to be found, they're going to show you how to, they're going to show you how to figure that out. The more and more, the, the deeper you get into it, the more assistance you will get. I like that. How do you address a family member who crossed over and was abusive to you? I guess you would probably have to ask the Baron. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I do, I do the physicals. <laughs> I do the physical stuff, but that's not my that's not my forte. Um, let's see, what's some basic information you need to start with? So I have a class that's starting, an uh, intro class that's starting this Saturday, um, and you can sign up for it on our website, SankofaGlobalExchange.com, and we will show you how to start from scratch, how to start from scratch, and how to build uh, how to build your uh, your genealogy chart in a, in a very uh, efficient way. Because most people, when they start genealogy, what they do is they they go on the internet. And they go, uh, they go to a website or something, and they just follow the basic plans. But that's going to get you basic results. What you want, you want to go deep. You want to go deep to the where you know the route. Like when you know the route, like okay, I told you about our route from Cod Molly to St. Louis, Senegal, to Havana, Cuba, to New Orleans, to Galveston, Texas, to West Helena, Arkansas. I told you about that. That's just one branch of the family. The other fam, the other branch of the family is from Mayoro. We have, uh, we have ancestors from Mayoro, Sierra Leone. Hastings, Sierra Leone, they went through Kulum, Guinea, then they went to the British Virgin Islands, then they landed in the Hilton Head Island in Charleston. So you have that. Then I have the Native American side, that, that uh, our forefathers are from the Smoky Mountains, which was called Khartoum, but my, but my direct ancestors were living in Greene County, Georgia. So you have these different routes. You want to be able to piece that together, and going on the basic everyday sites that everyone else goes on is not going to yield you those results, typically. Mm. I like that. Uh, this one here got a pretty long one, but... Uh... My ancestors escaped plantations and created their own tribes in the jungles of Suriname. Okay. So I guess most of them aren't registered anywhere. How do I go about that? So when, what you want to do is you, you got to start somewhere. Okay. You can't... It's difficult to start from the, uh, from the very beginning and bring it up to modern day. You want to start from now and work your way back from the people that you know. So, well, like I said, get in the, get in the class and we will, sh and I'll show you how to get to the, all of these type of things. All right. We have a, we have an end to end solution. So we're going to show you how from, from the start from the beginning, we go through ancestor dreams and how to, how to analyze the dreams to, to, uh, to piece together your piece together your chart. We talk, we, co we cover how to find your ancestral village we show you the first half of our classes, which are the, uh, the first four, is all about covering everything that happened from modern day right now back to the actual first person that was brought over to the, uh, to the States or, or to the Caribbean or to South America, wherever your family is, is particularly at. And then the second half of our more advanced classes are actually going to the continent when you're actually in Africa, how to recapture the rest of the, uh, your family uh, history while you're on the continent. So we go step by step, and we're gonna get you where you need to go. All right. Uh, I, I one of the one of the questions was, and and I'm curious too. Uh, could you share uh, some success stories from one of your clients? Ooh, oh man, we just found so we just found an, an elder's uh, uh village in Sierra Leone. Okay, I, I can't divulge the name and all that, but we just found the brothers the last month. Uh, this brother's in his seventies. Okay. So before he leaves this planet and transitions to wherever he's going, he, he, know, he knows exactly where his ancestors emanated from. And that is just one of the happiest things that, uh, that could possibly happen. Um, we also have other clients that are, are, man, some people come with things 
and some people, you know, learn things later. Somebody, uh, one of our clients came to us and they had just found some land and they're real close to finding their ancestors, but they're on the cusp of it. They're on the cusp of it. I know they're going to find it next week or two. And then um, we have another one um, that 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 uh, family was in was in West Africa, came to the states. Okay, then uh, got caught up with the people that went back to Liberia, then came back to the states. Okay, so you can imagine all of the twists and turns that's going on with that. But they're having major mm -hmm. success. And and uh, and uh, and shout out to Dr. Burroughs. Uh, there, there was a. Um, they they found they found the uh the name they found their ancestors' names on the boat on the on the ship that was going back to Liberia. So you have these type of things that pop up, and I mean, the 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 man is endless. It's endless. I, I hear that, man. I, I I love it, and and this is this is what this is. I think this is a uh, a missing component in 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 all spirituality because. As it is, we have these spiritual systems that's created throughout time and through the world, but nobody actually goes back to say, okay, this was your your name, and this was your grandfather's name, this was your mother's name. And like you say, they trace it, how come that spirituality became your go-to prayer source and things of that nature? Because I remember watching a movie where uh, this guy escaped from uh, Sierra Leone, a war-torn country, and his grandfather got to speak to him, and he stumped the ground every time he said, son of this, grandson of this, grandson of that. So they took it back seven stages to where the judge he was talking to couldn't dispute nothing he was saying. It's like by him knowing all of that, it was nothing but truth coming out of his mouth. You know, that's so true because when it was time to get naturalized, it's like, hey, all right, you say your folks are from here. Prove it, and man, <laughs> I got I got I got documents this thick, man. You can go through it if you want to. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> hey, hey, as soon as soon as me and you get done, and I and I get at least seven ancestors, I know who that is. I'm gonna make a video stumping. I'm the son of this, grandson of this, great grandson of this, great. Aunt. Well, if you think about it. Even when you look at like the Bible, okay, such and such begot such and such, such yeah. and such begot this person, begot that person, and so you're reading it, and, and, and sometimes you get bored with it. But the importance of it, because let's just say there's an issue, okay, there's an issue going on. When did it start? Mm. Well, if you know who begot who and who begot who, well, wait a minute, this happened 700 years ago with this person. What well, what was going on? Then you look at the research. What happened in that in that time frame? What was going on in that in that area? Oh, okay. Now it makes sense. Okay, <laughs> it's that simple. Okay, but because it, because we're talking about the past, you know, a lot of folks press it to the side. Now the past can become the present if if something bad happened and you, it was it was never addressed. And one of the other success stories that I could talk about is just the chemistry and the improvement of relationships that it has on families. Okay, because you got a whole bunch of folks in your family that you either not cool with or that you haven't spoke to for a long time for whatever reason, good or bad. And when you start diving into your genealogy, you, you're forced to talk to people and learn the things that's necessary for you to complete your chart. And what this does is it heals people because now you're finding out that the reason something bad might happen is not my fault. Mm. It happened because of this, or it happened because something was going on in the community. And now I understand why grandma acted the way she did. Now I understand why grandpa was like this or like that. You know, and so now you're able to release, you know, a lot of the things that's been plaguing a lot of people in the family. Wow, that's that's tough because I consider myself a, a spiritual based trauma counselor. That's that's what I that's what I tell myself when I look in the mirror every day. This this work that you're doing will make that so much easier for those of us who take up this role as trying to to heal people spiritually, uh, trying to get them to smile again when things are dark, just no, just them knowing that they came for this and this is why their mindset is made up like this. You know, mm -hmm. maybe somebody wasn't a killer, but they was thrust in that time frame of a war zone to where they had to be that, and now that's kind of like imprinted on their soul. Now we can have a little understanding and things of that nature. This is this is what you're saying. This is what I'm taking from it. 
Right, right. Because genealogy is like your manual to yourself. Okay. So someone comes to you and they have an issue. Well, it's like, all right, tell me what's wrong with my car. Well, tell me what's wrong with my computer. So you got to spend all this time searching for it where I already have my manual. Hey, this is what's going on <laughs> at this particular time. You know, what's up with that? Okay. So now you, you you cut out you cut out all the middle you you cut out all of the extra stuff and you can go directly to the source you can go directly to to the problem and fix it right away, wow. you know. But it behooves you to look into your ass. Like I've been telling people, man, listen, you got it, you got to do it. And and once one person does it, it's cool for the whole family. It's not like six of you have to do it. Just one person in each family take it seriously. One or two people take it seriously, and then boom, you're able to fix so many things. That you just would have never thought about, and 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 I'm gonna and I'm gonna keep relating it back to spiritual, to spiritual cleansing and uh, spiritual based trauma counseling. As spiritualists, we do cleanings. We rub you down. We put you in water. We rub, we kick a coconut. I just make a joke about it. We do cleanings to get whatever curses generational off, but. If somebody was to come to me armed with what you are giving them or, or what you have for them, hey, I know in the year 1472, my ancestor got in a fight with a witch and, 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 and lived away. Mm. As a hey. spiritual person, I can surgically go in and literally play, pray that particular thing off. And, and this is, and, and it just, what you're offering in the hands of a spiritual practitioner, man, is 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 potent. Well, I didn't even think about it like that, but <laughs> I, yeah, I definitely think that anyone who is a spiritual guru or a spiritual uh, healer, a priest, you know, rabbi, anyone like that, I think that they would just help you uh, with with the uh, with your congregation so much more because you know it's just wow, you're able to see what's going on. You know, on a grand scale. You know, I think I think without your genealogy, you just you're shooting into the sky and just hoping, you know. So whereas now you're able to be like, this is great uncle such and such. This is, you know, and a lot of it is just it's right there in your face. You just not you just don't see it. Wow. That's 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 if I could, if I could go down a list of just how many things are sitting in somebody's uh somebody's garage, you know, this is uncle such and such that was live 60, 70, 80 years ago. Nobody ever looked through these boxes. There's just old, oh, that's just old stuff. Man, you don't know what's up in that I, box. I, 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 I like this question Black was just asked. Uh, let me go back now. There you go. What she asked? She asked uh, what, uh, what? Yeah. Okay. What documentation advice would you give us now to make it easier for the future offspring to find them? So are you talking about documentation documentation you find uh, outside or, or documentation like that you make yourself? So basically like you have, you have the documentation that you find on the internet, uh, libraries, you know, books and all of that. And I think once you find, once you figure out what's going on with your lineage, what what I what I think is the best thing to do is just to get a jump drive, okay, and and just save it, okay. Type it up, drag all of the files and different things that uh that that are pertinent to your family lineage, and make it organized so that somebody a hundred years from now when they click on it they're not confused like man what the you know what was grandma such and such you know what was she on you know. Make it organized to where any that to where a fifteen year old can go through it, okay, and figure it out. So that way, if anything ever happens to where everyone has to move or the family gets separated, you never know war could break out. Uh, anything could break out to where as long as uh, as long as a few people in the family have access to this, and don't make just one, make like ten of them, and give it to elders and people that's trustworthy in the family that you that you uh that you know is going to look out. Because this is your identification. It's like leaving your wallet out. You can't, you can't leave it out. Okay, and then, but uh, but I would say save it on a on a hard drive, and keep it with important people in the family that that are trustworthy. So that way, that that uh that information can stay in the family for years and years to come. So now, so then, two or three hundred years from now, y'all don't have to start from scratch. 
All right. So we got to, <clears throat> so at this moment, we got about 15 minutes left in this. So give them the pertinence of how everything, how in your class. So from here on out, we're just going to talk about how your classes, how your program, how your projects is set up, what they can expect when they join the classes, because I'm going to be in there as well. I mean, just, okay. just hip them. Okay, so we have uh, we have all we have our classes. Like I said, the first four are going to cover uh, what we call our basic classes. That's gonna that's gonna take you. It's gonna cover about fifty percent of your ancestry history. Everything that happened to your family in America, the Caribbean, South America, wherever they are at now. Okay, back to the uh, back to we're looking to get to the first person that came over uh, during slavery. Okay, and then the, the second half is going to cover the remaining portions of your ancestry for those who are actually going to go to Africa, okay, and, and, and to recapture the rest of your history because a portion of it you're just not going to get in the States or on the Internet, okay? And we're going to go through all of these things step by step, okay? We have a nice formula. I know I know it works. It work, it's worked for me on every branch of the family. I know it's going to get you where you need to go, and, it, and it's, going to, uh, it's going to fix so many things. But those are the classes. Now, we also have consultations, so... For some people that have special situations like uh, like the person I mentioned that, you know, they're, they're from West Africa, came to the States, went back to Liberia, came back. You have special situations like that that is gonna, you're going to need more uh, hands-on uh, information. So we have consultations for, you know, brick walls and things like that. Uh, we also have a one-on-one -on -one service, an hourly service, I'm excuse me, an hourly service for those who want to pay by the hour and we'll do the research for you. And we also have a full, uh, we have a full service um, to where that's the, that's our most complete service is is uh, it's, it's more high priced, but we will do your entire your entire uh, genealogy for one particular branch of the family from the very beginning all the way back to your ancestral village. That will get it done, and that will and you won't have to worry about it. We, we do that as well. And uh, and our final service is um, we have virtual family gatherings. So whenever you have a family get together, a holiday, birthday, you know, wedding, whatever, whenever the majority of family, you have 20 family members, 50 family members all together, and y'all want to sit down, we'll come in on a Zoom conference and we'll and we'll help you step by step get through uh get through a lot of a lot of your genealogy right then and there. So we have those all on our website, Sankofa Global Exchange.com. That's S-A-N-K-O-F-A Global Exchange.com. And just go through the website, through the services, the classes, and all of that. You know, click on the downloadable forms, and it'll break down what each class has uh, going on, and uh, which day, and things like that. And, and it's, it's pretty straight for, straightforward. I like that, man. That that's so good. So, in in order to honor my brother here, uh, for everybody who joins this class, he gonna he gonna let me know something. Everybody, your ancestor reading from me is discounted in half. So you come to me with the information that he gave to you, man, and you book that reading. That's how I price up those ancestor readings. I, I I can't think of no better gift to support my brother and to support you all with this as as in if he's giving you the roadmap, now when I'm sitting up here trying to help you figure out who is X, Y, and Z, you can say, Oh yeah, so and so and so on, and you can get that message just that that, that much clearer. So I'm, if you go to the Baron and you already know who your ancestors are, <laughs> oh man. Hey, I feel sorry for who crossed y'all. <laughs> it's going down. God, man, I, 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 that, that one ancestor reading I did for that girl, her, her grandmama pulled the gun on me, and she was from 1872, a, a, a cowboy female. So, man, I was... <laughs> God, man, but hey, that, that, that's the way things go. Everybody, this brother is offering a hell of a service, a heck of a service, for our culture, for for us as humans, I mean, he has he has a foot in the game to help and assist. And if you talk to him one on one, you'll see how passionate he is about it. You'll see how he literally took himself from this to that. I mean, and the the passion, the drive, the energy is there. And I mean, he took he took his own and and got nationalized in his home country. Uh, dual citizen, how do you think that? Man, that's a great feeling. And again, I can't say enough after talking to him, and he talked to me for one hour, and man, and I, I was blown away with what he was saying, because as I was talking to him about it, I started reliving in my mind's eye 
what those ancestors are going to just by him saying, okay, what about this one? What about this one? What about this one? And I'm like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, my God. And I'm like, I got to get on this. And I'm telling you guys, you guys got to get on it. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking of the ancestors that you mentioned to me. It's a whole bunch of stuff probably going on with just them. <laughs> we ain't even talking about their brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't, don't put me out there just yet, man. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, it's, it's just, when you look at it and you see that road map, I mean, when you just talk about just five or six ancestors, you know, they, they might have they might have left with a lot of things going on. And if you add all their brothers and sisters, there's a lot more. But it's like when you go further and you get back to the one, okay, to that one or that two, boom, it's going to fall like dominoes. I'll I, I, I leave you with this. So, so I, I was doing some research about Chicago, and mm -hmm. they said Chicago was started by a, a, a Haitian guy, a guy that mm -hmm. came over from Haiti. Uh, he worshipped his, his uh, patron saint was Shango. That's where he mm -hmm. get the, the verb Chicago, Shango, it all plays. And now Chicago is a war-torn area, it's pretty much, urban war-torn. Mm -hmm. and, and after we got off and I was reading my books, doing my notes on that alone, I said, if if somebody from his family who's in Chicago, native, can trace they, they, they lineage back to him, the first one that got off that boat that came over here that say, I'm going to make Chicago, uh, Chicago my home, and why Chicago turned into such a war-torn place, that is some powerful thing to know what he was going through to where his energy resided to make Chicago turn into what it is. You, you he, might have had to fight. he might have had to fight right away. <laughs> that might, it might not have been any other option but to fight. And uh, I, mm -hmm. I think that's what this, I think what you're offering, this, that's what it's going to do for us as humans, as African American, as people. It's going to help us understand our conflicts our drives, our passions, our desires. It's, I, I, I see no flaw in this. I see no wrong in this. This is only greatness can come from it. Healing can come from it. And I, I, I tell you guys, patronize our brother here. And when you patronize him, you get half price on all your ancestor readings. I don't care if it's, it's not just going to be for a certain period of time. If you can prove that you took his course, you, you even spoke to him, but he just Drop me an email with your name in it. Have price on the ancestor reading because I'm curious to know what he found and how my spirits can help you all heal better. Hey, I had to take that deal. <laughs> <laughs> I had to figure out what to do. <laughs> I may have to go to Molly to have him pull my cards, boy, because after you tell me what's going on. <laughs> hey, man, I tell you what, man, this is, man, this is the most gratifying thing I've ever done, bar, bar none. I mean, I started off knowing nothing, leaving the States. I was 23 years old. I got to France, and most of my teammates were from Africa, so they asked me a lot of questions about Africa. And I would ask them, you know, they would ask me a lot of questions about America, and I would ask them a question about Africa. Most of them didn't even know what slavery or racism is, how we know it. So I was like, man, what would my life be like if I didn't know about this, you know? And, and just to watch, you know, and observe, you know, a lot of black folks walking around with no, with the mental strains and things not on them, mm. okay? And, and the way they conduct them, I'm like, wow, you know? And then another brother would ask me, uh, you know, why you say you're African-American? You know, because I identify with my country before the continent, you know? So, so don't call me African. And I was just like, man, I never thought of it that way. Wow. But just that's what really started me on this on this whole path and living in different countries and having different experiences, good and bad. And it led me back to France every time I would go to Italy, come back to France. I go to Argentina, come back to France. My mom was like, you know, why do you think you keep going back to France? And I was like, man, I'm just thinking basketball. Maybe it's the best market for me. And she was like, no, it's something deep going on. You need to pay attention. So I eventually took one of the DNA tests, and it said we're Mandinkas, right? And so I started looking up the Mandinkas and saw these uh, Mandinka names, Treori, Kita, Kanote. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm playing ball with these dudes. So I called them up. 
I'm not, you know, because much of my teammates had the same name. I'm like, hey, you know these people. You know Masa Musa, you know Sanjata Kita. They're like, yeah, we're descendants. How you know? And I was like, oh, man. That's why I had to be in France. Here I am looking at my brothers and, and sisters in their face, okay? They looking at me. We don't know we're the same people. Man, that's too and I'm, powerful. <laughs> it's trippy. It's trippy. And it, to continue on, oh, I got to move one second so I – my charger. But to continue on, man, uh, that's what inspired me to go to uh, Africa the first time to, I mean, to, uh, to West Africa the first time. So I'm, so as I, as, as I started continuing my research, I was, uh, I was like, okay, I kept learning ancestor this ancestor that, you know, in Africa, you must pay homage to your ancestors. So I was like, all right, let me put this to the test. I was about 29. Okay. And I was like, all right, to my ancestors that are Mandinkas, that are from um, the Senegal and Mali area, um, from in West Africa, let me know if the information that I have is true and if I truly need to go to West Africa at the end of the season. So about a week later, I was in Paris in this area called Chocolat, right? And I went to this African store. And so this is my first time being in an African store where I know everything I'm looking at. I understand the garbs. I understand all the pharaohs. I understand all the, the Orishas and, the, and, the, uh, and all the leaders. And, you know, they have, they have all that in there. So I started talking to the owner of the store about it. He said, man, I'm surprised the young brother from the States knows about all this because most of you guys, when you come in, you don't know, you don't care. And I said, well, I used to be like that because, you know, in the States, it's not like they really have it in our curriculum, you know. So unless your family knows, a lot of us really just don't know. I said, but I've been living in France for four or five years now. Most of my friends are, are from Africa. So I picked up on the culture and I'm planning on going for the first time, you know, in West Africa next, at the end of the season next month. And he said, uh, and so as I was talking, he has this large wall in the back of his, of his store with all these ancestors on it. You know, Malcolm X, Nelson Mandela, Stephen Biko, you know, King Tut, all the whole gamut. And so as I'm talking, he cuts me off. He said, well, when you go to Africa, it's going to be a powerful experience. But don't think it's by chance you came in today. Then he raised his right arm towards that back wall. And he said, the ancestors sent you an invitation. And I was like, dang. <laughs> so... And what's crazy, just a few minutes later, literally five minutes later, I'm buying a book about Sanjata Kita. Sanjata Kita is the Lion King. He's the founder of the Malian Empire. The movie is based off of him. So I'm buying this book about Sanjata Kita. And as, as, as I'm buying, purchasing this book, book's on the counter, okay? This brother walks into the store and starts talking to the owner of the store. Then the owner of the store looks at me and says, hey, this is the guy who wrote the book. He's going to sign it for you. He's a Mandinka. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm like, oh man! The ancestor put you in direct contact. That's what I'm saying. So when that's what that was my first experience ever asking the ancestors for anything, and so you know when I at the end of the season I went on over there and I went to Senegal first. I went to Mali second, and when I and and my whole trip was planned because I've been playing ball with guys from both of these countries for years. So I you know I knew how to speak French well enough to get around and do things. Um, you know, I had people, you know, family members that, of my friends that would take me to the villages and things. All of this stuff was already laid out. Why well, I had to be in France, okay? And when I finally meet the chief, I met all, I met several chiefs, but the main one I met, you know, my translator wasn't giving them, he wasn't translating good enough my story. And I'm like, you know, because the chief wasn't going to give me no answers at first because you got to have clearance, you know, to, to, to tell you certain things. So then I started break. I started speaking fluent French, bro. Like it just like some spirit just came over me. I boom, 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 and I'm explaining everything that I'm explaining to you, plus a lot more other things. And eventually he stopped me. It's like he intuitively knew. He said, "Okay, say no more. You one of us." And then then he broke down the the, the history before, during, and after uh, and, and after slavery. You know everything that happened and all of the information that I didn't get as a kid coming up. You know. I got, I was infused with it that very moment. And to me, that explained why I had to be in France of other countries, to be able to speak French to him, okay? And, and the last day I was in Mali, the first time, my teammate called me up from uh, from France. He's like, man, I want you to meet my coach. I'm like, man, I got a bunch of stuff to do, bro. Like, I, you know, I ain't really come here to meet nobody, no basketball people. He's like, man, just go meet him. So, all right. So I went to this hotel restaurant, the coach just happened to be a French guy. He knew who I was. He knew I could play. He and he and he said another guy was coming from the uh, from the sports federation. So this guy runs into the runs into the place, and I was like, "Man, what's what's going on?" Then he came over to me. He was like, "Man, I thought you was gonna leave before I got here." So now I'm like, "I'm like, man, something special." About <laughs> what's going on? 
So, <laughs> so you know, they were asking why I was there, and I was breaking it down, you know, my ancestral history and things. And while I was there, I was like, man, you could prove that? I was like, yeah. And they was like, well, we don't know if you'd be interested. We're impressed that you came this far. We don't know if you'd be interested, but we're getting ready for, for a national team tournament. We love if you play with us. And I was like, oh. Money came out of the deal, man. Come on, man. I, when, it's like if I had any doubt that I was in the right place, that was over. Wow. And I said, and I told him, I said, man, I said, how can I say no to that? I'll be honored to. And he said, all right, let's do it. So right then and there, we did all the documents and things. And I'm just sitting there watching these guys, you know, as they're filling out their paperwork and things. And I'm like, man, I could have met anybody, but I met these guys. You know, and then then they looked up at me. It's like, what? What's wrong? I said, man, you don't understand. My ancestors were taken from here hundreds of years ago, and I've just been here for a few days, and I'm about to get it all back. So, you cannot look in your genealogy if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you can be sitting up, You can be a, you can be the the third great 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 grandson of an African prince, man, and don't even know it. Look, don't know it. Get in your genealogy. This brother right here is offering truth. He's offering truth outside of a, a spiritual nature. He's just offering tangible, physical truth for you and your family to understand. This is something that the whole family can enjoy. You guys can sit back over time and say, okay, uh, Tasha, this is why you like baking bread because in, in 1412, so-and-so had a bakery. She was known as the best baker, just like you say. That medicine woman. This is why somebody go into the nursing field. I mean, your 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 service is offering us. I mean, some 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 well some well sought out questions, man. And I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough for what you do. I appreciate it. You know, I'm just uh, I mean, I'm ready. We ready. I got a great team together. We ready to to get everyone straightened out. You know, get everyone in the right direction, man. Just just come on. We ready for you. Y'all here? <laughs> so everybody, I'm gonna also upload this video to my YouTube channel for for uh, the other people to come take a look at. All of his information is in that post. Again, he said it several times, and I'm gonna let him close out this uh, this this session with with him giving you guys his information. He, he'll say it nice and slow, so they they can write down what they pin. And, you know, some people don't go to the phone; they be on the spot. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to him, and after he gets done, I'll close it out, y'all. Okay, so the way you can get with us is is go to www.sankofaglobalexchange.com. That's S-A-N-K-O-F-A, globalexchange.com. All right, that's our website. Our social media is uh, we're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at The Ancestors Way. So, uh, you know, hit your, hit your ad button and then The Ancestors Way. And our YouTube page is Sankofa Global Exchange. So we'll be uploading various things. Things have been buzzing uh, the last couple of weeks because I've been with the national team uh, the last couple of weeks in, uh, in Mali and in Tunisia. But uh, we rolling. You know, we start classes this coming weekend. So, hey, let's do it. It's time to figure it out. Y'all yeah, heard it. All right, brother. It was good. It was good speaking with you. Thank you for gracing the gracing your presence with the Baron, man. You yeah, after talking to you, I know you you're a heck of a guy. I know your passion and I know your truth and you're true for this and you're true to this. And everybody, I mean, pass spread the word, share, share, share. You know, that's my whole thing. When you share, you not only help me, but you help everybody in our community, including this brother right here, and that's what it's all about. All right. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, brother. And go, Ma. <laughs> go, Ma. Go, Ma. Okay, let me see how to do this. I'm new. There we go. All right, everybody. Uh, I'm learning this thing, and thank y'all for being patient with me. Hey, check this brother out. He's working with me personally, and I'm going to put my information up here once he get done with mine. I'm going to put it up here and let you guys see where I come from. I'm going to block out some names, too, because I don't need y'all to know that I got, you know, Caucasian DNA in me. <laughs> but, hey, I'm just, I'm just jiving. I'll share a little bit of what, what he shared with me, and uh, I think that's just going to make me better. And everybody, patronize this, brother. This is a service that I think is going to be really good for us, everybody on the planet.
especially us. All right, everybody, I'm the Baron telling you guys to trust the your universe because at the end of the day, you all you got. Take care. God bless. Much love. Soul Tribe.